without fear before our enemies. We have sworn an oath to restore Biafra or we die in the process. There will be no retreat and no surrender. If the option they give to us is to seek our restoration by violence, the every living thing living in the zoo will be destroyed. All the animals will be destroyed. It's a promise and a pledge we are making to them. They must understand that we just don't... people great dear friends wherever you are on the surface of this very planet earth we welcome you to hopefully another incisive exciting informative live presentation from this very noble platform of radio biafra transmitting on multiple platforms to the ends of this very earth wherever you are because we are listened to right across this very globe i say good morning good afternoon good evening and good night some of you especially those who are listening in the blessed land of biafra and those of you of course who are incarcerated unlawfully and illegally in abuja i know you may not be listening but I do hope that the grace of the Almighty in heaven that we praise and worship every blessed day finds you and that some of you will be home in no distant time. This evening we are going to preach the gospel of heaven as we have been mandated to. Without fear nor favor, without compromise, never ever contemplating surrender nor retreat, because our fight is noble. That is why only the pure at heart has been called to undertake this very task to liberate the sons of heaven. We have come that the truth may prevail. We have come that even the blind may see. We have come, especially this evening, that the deaf may be able to hear. Because anybody, any family that fails to imbibe what we are preaching this evening will face very severe and devastating consequences. Because before we came on air this evening, as we had predicted earlier today, very terrible thing happened 
in Anambra State. We can't allow such rubbish to continue to happen. But I do not want to go before myself. I want to consult heaven because without the Almighty sat upon his throne, we are nothing. Therefore, we must pray and in so doing, hand over our proceedings this very evening to the throne of heaven itself. I'm going to pray a very short prayer in the language of the ancients that the angels who are surrounding the throne of God Almighty in heaven may be even be able to worship and praise Elohim more than they have ever done today. Onye din son ebe. Onye obu na anya ji so so okwu onwe ke ihe ni ni nke wa de de na akwa anya no bo chi nke ta. Onye din son gbe ni ebi ebi. Anya de okwu ni rugo zo nna nke bre de ngozi. Onwe gi hop lan ke ma de de ndo bo. Mo ni ne cheta ya. Ine cheto mo ge bo ndo bi afran nna nke bre. Kinya nye zingota. Ni ye no fodru. Angu kite no bwi ke isye me bie ha. To madou mwa ka abonde na bayari we ne. Me papa no lo nan ke bre den kosi. Ongu konye dinye na ha ise be. Ye ni me li gwe. Ki we ziye hosi ni me mwa. Ka hawa wwe ta konu uche nan ke bre. Ki we nye han do mwa do. Bwla de si do la ha si we puta. Na ha na ne ha ki we nye han do mwa do nye mwa. Ni ye ha susu no bo chen keta ni ma nan bran nan ki me li gwe. Ko ha pi mwa zon. It cannot happen again. Give them common sense and understanding because some of them may not understand Igbo language, which is the oldest language in the world. But I pray tonight, our Lord God Almighty in heaven, that you may give your children discerning spirits and understanding. For them to understand that we have enemies who wish us death. People who do not want our race to survive. These children that did nothing when full on the Janja we were in our land. Raping and pillaging, they did nothing. But today they came out in an Ambra state to go rob a bank. Give them common sense or else they will be destroyed. And you will send your angels to minister to all the politicians that we are identifying tonight that sent them. You will also send your angels to minister to DSS in Anambra State. To one will you be anon in Anambra State. That what happened today can never ever repeat itself ever again. Or else heads will roll. We have come that your grace may multiply upon our lives because without you, O mighty one of heaven, Biafra will not come. That is why we can never ever mix criminality with the pursuit of the restoration of the kingdom of heaven. It can never happen. There can be no criminality in this very effort we're making. And anybody, any soul, any family, that seeks to defile this flag that over 5 million people died because of this tricolor of the rising sun. Anybody who commits any crime under this very banner, oh heavenly father, that person will be destroyed completely and totally. There will be no forgiveness. There will be none. I ask you, almighty father, the Lord of all the hosts of heaven. The host of all the heaven bow before thee. I give over the lives of these idiotic children into your hands that you may counsel, guide, and lead them through the path of righteousness. That you may give their parents some semblance of common sense to understand how to raise children. 
for them to understand that we cannot allow for an agenda weed to come into our land to instigate chaos it can never happen so that your will may be done upon our lives and this biafra that you have already ordained may come in the lives of this very righteous generation we give you and only you every praise and adoration because you are God. There is none like thee. Every honor and every adulation belongs to thee and thee alone. Now and forevermore we pray. He say, he say, he say, I am starting the presentation of this program this evening by stating it unequivocally and very clearly that there are ongoing efforts by Fulani slaves in our land propelled by the Department of State Security in Anambra State to rubbish the gallant work that ESN is doing in defense of the Holy Land of Biafra. What transpired in Anambra State today around Ogidi can never ever happen again. And I'm issuing an instruction this evening to all our intelligence teams on the ground. I want to find out the very cult group that is responsible for robbing a bank. And they were carrying Biafran flags. I want them found and found immediately. I am making this very broadcast this evening to remind everybody. I don't want to hear that maybe Bakasi has come again, that they are now like Bakasi. If your child is involved, if your child is involved in the robbing of a bank using the sacred flag of Biafra today, you must produce him. You must produce that child. All of the idiots that I was told went for a burial. They said that in a court. You must... From this evening, I don't want to hear about any cult again in Biafra land. Wherever there's a cult in Biafra land, they will be dismantled from top to bottom. I don't want to be here about any cultism in Biafra land anymore. I don't want to hear about all these useless groups that these idiots are going into. And any politician that buys methamphetamine drugs for our people, for our young people, because he, he or she wants to convert them into his political thugs. You're a dead man walking, I assure you. A dead man walking, I assure you. You idiots cannot rubbish the work that men and women are sacrificing their lives every day in order to secure our land. You idiots cannot rubbish it. I have never sanctioned, we can never sanction any, any form of criminality. It can never happen. We know who our enemies are. All of you idiots today that I was told that came out with your pump action guns and was shooting guns everywhere. We did not clear the road of police checkpoints full and agenda just for you to become lawless. It can never happen. It can never ever happen. I assure you. We are going to find all of you. We will find all of you. All the idiots today that picked up guns and you people we are there when Fulani was ravaging everywhere. Fulani came to Ayamel and killed people. You never came out. You never came out, did you? You never came out. But now you feel you have arrived, isn't it? You must excuse me because this idiots, they are attacking our lines once again. As always, they attack it. Let me send them somewhere else so they will not be able to attack what we are doing anymore. I want everybody to understand what I'm saying this evening. I want parents to understand what we are saying this evening. I need all of you to understand what we are saying. We are no longer, I repeat, we are no longer going to tolerate this garbage anymore. It can no longer happen. That we are having with our 
apps. And of course, in Biafra land, this very message is going into. We must be very, very careful. This is the same thing that the Fulani Janjaweed did, instigating boundary disputes all across Biafra land. Cross River and the Boni, they are fighting. Abia and, uh, and um, Akwaibom, they are fighting. Everywhere that is a border fight, it is being instigated by DSS. That is their job. And as if we knew, we sounded this alarm very, very early today. We got the intel that DSS was planning to go and rob a bank. They were planning to go and rob a bank. And this evening, they have done it. They have done it. Therefore, from today, there will be no cultism from tonight. No cultism in Biafra land anymore. If we catch you that you are in a cult, let your villagers talk about say, oh, they have come again. No, Bakasi is here. If your child is in a cult, go and rein him or her in this night. If your child is part of any cult in the whole Biafra land, go and advise your child to leave that cult tonight. ESN is in the forest protecting our land. We have not come into the town yet. Go and ask our enemies, the Fulani Janja, with both their army and their police, how they're finding things inside the bush. I am warning all of you, I don't want to command ESN to come out on the streets of Biafra land. They're in the forest defending all of you. I don't want to command them to come into our township. Don't allow yourselves to be used by Fulani slaves in our midst to disrupt or try to distort the message you are passing to the whole world. You want the world to say, oh, we'll not give them Biafra. Can't you see what I'm doing with Biafra flag? That's what you want. That is what DSS wants you to do. Any politician, we are going to start our, our investigation started tonight. Before weekend, we are going to come up with the names of the sponsors of these idiots that did what they did today in Anambra State. Then you will know how formidable we are. We don't want to engage anybody or any group in our land. If you kill your brother or your relative, you're not strong. It's when you kill outsiders that you're a strong person. I want our men to focus on fighting a, a common enemy, which is Fulani, Janja, Buddhism, and terrorism. Don't allow us to leave the war front where we are to come to your villages looking for you. You won't find it very funny, I assure you. I don't want to hear about any cult anymore. Anybody attending any burial in, in any of our villages, no more guns. We cannot see you with a gun anywhere, or else you will die that same day in that very place. Always go and ask the zoo police and the army. If you see an angle, we will show you how angry we are. We are against any form of criminality. No kidnapping, no bank robberies, nothing. Men did not sacrifice their lives to clear our roads and our motorways of roadblocks. Should I say, full and checkpoints. Extracted money. You were even for the ones crying. We don't want these roadblocks. There are too much. These checkpoints everywhere. They have been cleared. Now we have cleared it. You think you can come out with a gun to be robbing banks. Without banks, you will not have a job, you idiots. Don't you know that? They are the ones that give loans to people to create businesses that employ people. You are doing court. When Fulani came, you did not, you, you, your courtism deserted you. You did nothing. They raped our sister at Huli and cut her to pieces. You did nothing. We are going to find you people. We will find all of you one after the other. And then you will understand how serious we are. And Mad people everywhere. Our systems are back on full now. Once again, we even on even Facebook is allowing me to try to broadcast. Of course, they will remove people as always. But we are on Instagram, please. And Instagram is very, very stable at Mazenam the Kano underscore official. Forget these fools and what they are doing. Forget Facebook and all the rest of it. It's DSS that planned the attack today on the bank. Anybody moving about with their flag again, 
disturbing public peace in Biafra and Chile can all walk up in the There will be no mercy. Uh, I'm warning all of you in advance before I say, oh, they're killing each other. I'm warning you now in advance. Nobody is allowed to carry Biafran flag to intimidate, to harass, even to speak rudely to anybody. This very flag has the blood of over 5 million people on it. We don't play with it. If you want to fight, go and fight Fulani Janjaweed. Go and fight Fulani terrorists in the forest. Stop harassing people or else I will give the command for ESM to leave the bushes and come outside. And then all of you are dead, I assure you. Let me joke on the zoo. You all dead. From tonight, no more cultism. We cannot suffer and remove roadblocks to make life easier for our people, only to end up creating a haven for idiots and fools to be harassing our own people that we are defending. Fulani will harass your people and torment them. You do nothing. When Fulani Janjaweed are gone, you idiots will now come out to torment your own people who have already been tormented by the Fulani. And you think about that sort of rubbish? It can never happen. Let what happened in number today be different. And any state that this happens again, DSS will be in trouble in that state. DSS, I'm telling you now, Anywhere you organize the type of rubbish you did today in Anambra State, you will be in trouble. No more cultism. All the politicians using some of our children, our boys, whom they place on drugs, we know the drugs they're using. Methamphetamine drugs. So they can convert them, they can become dependent on drugs and they now use them as political thugs. Your days too are numbered. For allowing yourselves to be used by the full and to instigate trouble in our land as you did today, you will not be spared. I want to make it very clear tonight that whatever happened today in Anambra will never happen again, I assure you. It can't happen. Because we are going to find those responsible and they are all going to be dealt with. You know, you, you people are very funny sometimes. You want to try people's resolve. Sometimes you, you want to try to see what you can do. You are like doctors. You keep pressing to see where he's spending, he's spending us, isn't it? All of you are in one almighty mess, I assure you. You are all going to be found. You will be caught, one after the other. All of you criminals, attacking banks and businesses. I don't, I don't understand the type of nonsense. So you, none of you feel any shame. When Fulani police and army are molesting your own people, you'll be there watching and complaining. Now Fulani police are gone and their army, they are gone. You now want to replace them in the land of Biafra. You think that is possible? With IPO, with ESN around, you think it is possible? We came to eradicate every form of criminality. It doesn't matter who the perpetrators are. They could be full and there could be some of you idiots that claim you're in court. From tomorrow, let's find you in a court. Useless fools everywhere. Anywhere that businesses are being attacked, you will report it. Anywhere you see anybody doing court, report that very individual, please. So you want us to come and face you so that Fulani can take over our land? Is that what you want? When Biafra is almost at hand, a land where you can be free, meaningfully engaged in some form of useful employment or the other. You want to go about causing nuisance. Then we'll teach you how we deal with those who are so idiotic enough to want to join politicians to win what we are doing. You criminals today are trying to tarnish the image of IPOB and ESN you will not go free. All politicians are hereby placed on notice that anywhere we discover any court group in, in Biafra land, it will be forcibly dismantled. Or should I say forcefully dismantled? I don't want to hear that we are entering the era of Bakasi again because I'm warning all of you tonight. In case you don't know, what the politicians want to do is to use some of these drug addicts to claim they are ESN, 
Anybody who has any brain will understand that we are the children of light. We don't engage in any form of criminality. We don't. We abhor it. Because once we do, the glory and mercy of Elohim will leave us. And once God withdraws his grace from us, we are finished. It took us nearly 15 years to bring the grace of God back upon the lives of our people. People are praying morning, noon, and night. We can't allow some idiots to ruin it. It can never, ever happen. I don't want to hear when your brother or your cousin is caught doing cultism. I don't want to hear this rubbish. We are in Bakasi again because the Janjaweed papers and some of them will write glowingly your account of what happened. Whenever you go to talk your rubbish to zoo journalists, remember to start the story from the beginning. My brother was in Anambra, shot dead two people and robbed a bank. Remember to start from the beginning. We can't allow this rubbish to continue. You fools, I don't know if it is uh, Janja with the full army that impregnated some of your mothers. I don't know how, how you, why you reason as foolishly as you do. It can no longer happen. I, I'm warning all of you tonight, especially all those criminals holding Biafran flags. But unfortunately for you, everybody knows that IPOB can never ever engage in any form of criminality. No, we don't. And I won't condone it. Never, ever, ever. Dear friends all over the world contribute the funds with which IPOB is run and now Eastern Security Network to secure our land. We know that banks play a very vital function in terms of generating employment by making sure that businesses are set up. We understand that very clearly. Therefore, banks, no go area for anybody, any criminal. Businesses, you see all those people trading and doing their businesses, running their industries, no go area, don't go near them. Or else you're finished. We are in the forest and farmlands fighting felony terrorists and in the streets tormenting our people. That cannot happen. Do you want me to allow the police and the army to come back again with their street checkpoints so that when they see you in Okada, if you don't pay them 1500 they kill you. Is that what you want? Is that what you want? I'm asking you. If you don't want that, then stop this nonsense. It must stop tonight. I am going to give you numbers to call. Anybody who is involved in cultism, if you know anybody who is involved in the mayhem today in Anambra State, I'm going to give you two numbers to call. Give us their names. Send their pictures to us. And then leave the rest for us to handle. Please. Very, very important. The number to call if you know anybody involved in the nonsense today in Anambra State, in the cultism that degenerated into armed robbery today in Anambra State, they, they stupidly robbed the bank. Fools, idiots. The number to call is plus 49162-730-6732. I repeat, plus 49162-730-6732. 06732. There is also another number. You can get us on Signal and I believe also on WhatsApp. Send the information, please. Plus 49176673934310. I repeat, plus 49176673934310. Nine three four one zero. Call any of these numbers. Give us the name of the cultist in your village that participated in the robbery of a bank today in Anambra State using Biafran flag. We need their names that we may teach them the lesson they will never ever forget in their lives. If you behave like a Janjaweed, we treat you like a Janjaweed. You behave like a Fulani terrorist, a Miyeti Allah terrorist, we treat you like one. Our land, we have been tormented enough. Over five million dead at the hands of these people. Economic and political emasculation. Marginalization of the type that you cannot even begin to describe. No employment. Poverty everywhere. And you want to add to this misery by becoming a nuisance. 
We won't allow it. The people that put you in the mess you're in today are in the north. Fulani Janjaweed. Of course, some of them are in uh, Obianos cabinet in the shape of Mieti Yala. They are the ones boasting that they are the owners of your land. Instead of you to go out and fight them, you're busy harassing people in the village. The Fulani are claiming that they are the owners of Nigeria. Or you have not heard that the Fulani is are claiming that they are the owners of Nigeria. Have you not heard about it before? Have you not heard that was what uh, uh, Ganduje, whatever his name, said? That they are the owner. The Kanu state governor said that Fulani, they are the owners of Nigeria. Whereas he's speaking from a Hausa land. Kanu is Hausa territory. Gobe, Sokoto is Hausa territory. Katsina is Hausa. But the Fulani came and took over by pitching Hausa against Hausa, by pitching the Hausa people, they are paid the peasants against their monarchs. The happy monarchies. Today, the Fulani took over. Now they have come to a number to instigate some of you into a form of, should I say, stupidity. And you have fallen for it. And one day, Fulani will take over if we allow you to continue in your stupidity and hopelessness. That is why we must be very resolute and determined. That is why we must remain focused. That is why we cannot allow nor tolerate any form of misbehavior, criminality, or stupidity to creep into what we are doing. We cannot allow it. We are a disciplined family. That is why we are in over 100 countries of the world, because we are disciplined. We cannot allow fools back home to ruin it. This idiot that is busy building hotels everywhere. That fool that speaks from both sides of the mouth, of course, on drugs. He's saying he has 5,000 men to give to the useless governors that you have in Ebola land. When he doesn't have up to 200 men, he can give command to and they obey him. Not up to 200. He claims he has 5,000 men. If you know him, go and warn that idiot. Warn him. I have never ever remembered him for once because he's irrelevant. He's a thief. He's a petty criminal. He's a con artist. He steals money from people to go and build hotels, not to fight for freedom. Go and warn him if you know him. Warn him. That thing his Fulani masters are instigating him to do, he will get it in quantum. That thing they're instigating him to do, he will get it a million fold. He should better shut his thinking dirty mouth. He has nobody. And if he thinks that the full and DSS, you know, where they can use him to fight ESN, then he has signed his own death certificate. Full and said they own our land. Instead of you to rise up and reason properly like human beings, you're behaving like fools. You are behaving like fools. Look at the look at Hausa people. Do you want what happened to Hausa people to happen to you? Look at Yoruba, our Yoruba brothers. They are now fighting back. Everybody, including the traditional rulers, everybody is fighting back, trying to secure a better future for the Yoruba people. Are you not reading it? So you don't know that only of Ife, uh, are on a Kakan for of Yoruba land, Ghana. You don't know that they, they are now in favor of dividing Nigeria. You don't know that. You can see how the Yoruba youths are fighting for something that they believe in. We have been fighting and dying for you. That is why the Fulanese do not have any foothold in our forests, even as they do in Yoruba land. Yet, instead of you to appreciate it and say that what is happening is very used to be, used to be carrying their front flag all over the place and looking for a bank to rob. You're doing hard man. But when the Fulanese came, nobody found you. You did nothing. Such rubbish and idiocy we cannot allow to continue. Northerners remain Nigeria's owners. Igbos and Yoruba should respect this, according to the governor of Kanu State. These are the people that you want to be in one Nigeria with. This is what we are trying to save you from. But some of you sadly do not want to reason or understand. The governor of Kanu State, the people who contribute nothing to the coffers of Nigeria, they contribute absolutely nothing. 
Nothing, nothing, nothing. Tell me what the funds contribute. Only if you call moving cattle from place to place and taking people, taking over people's land is um is a viable economic undertaking. The same people who cannot run a country. If even uh, despite how much I hate Lugard for bringing the zoo together, at least he was right about something. That those people are not serious. They can never even take care of themselves. They're very lazy. They cannot work very hard. Show me one full animal who is a hard-working human being, self-made, name one person. That is none. And before you come up with your nonsense that Dangote is the richest man in Africa because you're a fool, he does money laundering for corrupt felony politicians. That's what he does. If you give me monopoly over ordinary, ordinary salt, I'll become a multi-billionaire. That is why we're even going to file antitrust laws in the USA. He should no longer be going to the US. Because there's a law in the USA, once you run a monopoly anywhere in the world, it is 25 years imprisonment. Go and check the antitrust laws in the USA. It's very clear. These are the people that you want to be in the same country with. You cannot stand up and fight for your own rights to be going about terrorizing villagers. The same thing that Britain did with some of our ancestors, or should I say forefathers when they came. The army that Britain used to conquer us came from Ghana. West Africa Frontier Force, if you don't let me tell you. Black people conquering black people for a white man. Useless fools. The same thing you're doing. Full and ordinary full and is using you in an empire state to fight against your own people. You fools without brain. The same thing they do to, to house people. Look at house land today is, is owned by full and Look at how the land today is owned by, by Fulani. Is that the same thing you want to happen in your village? You are doing hard man. You are doing hard man. These are the idiots, the, 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 the should I say, the, your so-called governors. The only reason why they announced their useless bubaco is to try to rubbish ESN. They brought him. Umahi went on television, opened his thinking, stupid mouth to be talking rubbish, talking about banditry, ESN banditry, because they planned to rob a bank in Anambra today. That's these politicians. I'm, I believe it, and, and DSS, they arranged it. I have not said that we would interfere with the electoral process in the zoo. If this continues. There will be no governorship elections in Anambra State this year. I'm not saying it by peaceful boycott. We will do it by force this time around if that's what you want. Because it seems to me that our people, when you try to speak to them very softly to make them understand, they fail to understand. They launched a so-called security outfit. There was no logo. Nobody was employed. No guns to go and face the enemies that are highly armed. From the Sahel. Not even ordinary bicycle, talk less of a motorcycle or cars. No training. This is the most stupid and foolish launch of a security outfit anywhere in the world. I hope you understand what I'm saying. I hope you are following what I'm saying. People who cannot pay salary to teachers. They cannot pay salary to nurses. They cannot pay civil servants in their states. They want to go and float a security outfit, more or less to run a band of rogues and criminals because they cannot pay them. They don't have the, they have stolen all the money. Where will they get the money to pay? From who, from where? They have not paid that many teachers. We run a volunteer army. People who are devoted to the liberation of their land, the defense of Biafra land. They want to recruit people that are going to train and pay salary. They have not paid teachers. They have not paid pensioners. All of them put together, none they have not paid. They are the ones you are launching a security outfit, not one single thing to show for it, not one. Only a bag, a bag, a bag to go and fight IPOB, to fight ESN. You people are digging your graves, you know. <laughs> mm. Oh, my goodness me. My goodness me. These people are very, very foolish. Let me tell you one thing you don't understand. You see your governors, they are working for Fulani to take us over. 
And you know, the, the, why I'm so happy is because you don't need to go far to look for a template of your impending doom if you don't support what IPOB is doing. Don't go too far. Just look at all Hausa people. Look at Hausa. Look at Hausa people. If you want to know what your future is going to be like, please, please, please look at Hausa people only. What happened to Hausa people? The same thing some of you are doing today with Yebubagun, was what they did. Fulani came very cleverly. You know they're very clever. Very cleverly they came because they even Fulani started practicing divide and rule before the British came. They set one against the other, brother against brother. As you're fighting, they come in as peacekeeper. By the time you wake up, they have a uh, Sadekil uh, Fulani of all. Then your eyes will clear. That's what they're trying to do to us. You must not allow them to use you. Don't allow them. You see all these your so-called politicians and governors, they are full and slaves full time. That is why when full and terrorists come and kill us, they say nothing. Nothing. But if it's IPOB, you see them shouting on channels, have any of them been on channels TV before to condemn the killing going on right now in Eboye? Do you know how many men we have lost since last week? Because we are fighting the Nigerian army. Not, not for regular flanny terror, not mere terror, terrorists. We are fighting the real army of Nigeria inside the boy. Are you aware of that? Do you know what we are doing? This is your sign over there, doing jamboree, doing uh, uh, fake, fake lunch. That idiot that specializes in using our money to build hotels opened his stupid mouth to say, oh, they're, they're online, they're on the internet. Whoever did this thing to you people, it will never be well with that entity. You despise yourself so much that when Fulani come and kill you, you say nothing. But any day we rise up to go and confront those killing us. You call our actions criminality. You call it criminality. But when Fulanese kill us in our villages, rape our sister and cut her body into pieces, it is nothing. It's not criminality. It's a farmer header clash. And you think that Elohim will forgive any of you? We are the last line of defense without IPOB. I'm telling you, in the name of Almighty in heaven, all of you would have been fallenized by now. Everybody, including my Yoruba brothers, all of you would have been gone. Ask yourself, why is it that Yoruba people are in exile in Benin Republic? How come Fulani people drove Yoruba people away from their land? They are refugees in Benin Republic. How come two-thirds of Yoruba forests are being occupied by Fulani? Why is that not happening in our land? Ask yourself that question. Why is the East as secure as it is? It's because of IPOB and ESN. Nobody else. Of course, I, I do apologize to heaven. Of course, the grace of God Almighty in heaven. Not man. And some of you are busy talking rubbish. I, I sometimes I wonder if you have brain at all. Any of you. Idiots supporting these stupid governors. Idiots to the call. Idiots. When our sister was killed and cut to pieces, Unuli, what did Obia not say? I ask you, what did Obia not say? Will Obia not? Right now, this minute, this second, we are in a war in a point state. We are fighting a war right now in a point state. Has Omaki said anything? Is there security, security uh, uh, summit? Have they said anything? Because they are working for the full and some of you are too blind to see it. You are too foolish to understand what is happening around you. But thank heavens that we are smarter than them. That is why when Ganduja is saying that Nigeria belongs to them, when he hears about her, when his conscience tells him about IPOB, he will somehow swallow, swallow some of his words. You know, we're not going to allow them to succeed. You know that very well, don't you? We can't allow them to succeed. Not now, not tomorrow, not ever. 
Nigeria is their own. No, no DSS won't invite him on. Nobody. They are busy doing their bidding, using you to fight their wars for them. You, before it was Yoruba against Igbo. Igbo against Yoruba. Until we discovered that that was a full and a plan. And we said, no, that the East and the West must be together. Now that plan failed. Now our Yoruba brethren, our brothers and sisters from Europe, now they realize that that thing we have been saying all along is the right way to go. Today, even the old new of you fell for people. Can the Obi of say such a thing? Of course, he did, he did well a few weeks ago. Can you imagine? You know, our people will tell you, oh, but uh, they have not fought a war before. We fought a war. Don't allow us to come out oh, and the Yoruba will deceive us again. Oh. That's what some of the idiots will say. But you see, this very generation of Yoruba people, this generation, this very one, they will set their people free. You watch and see what is going to happen. Have I ever told you something before or misled you? I can't because I'm under divine oath. I cannot. Even if the flesh wants to, I cannot. The spirit will reject it. You see this present generation of Yoruba, not the not the Kwara State one, not the, the fake Janjaweed, the real Yoruba people. They will set their people free. You watch and see what's going to happen. Did you see their women from the diaspora at the at, at Obas Palace? Do you know it's becoming very, very clear now for everybody? It is becoming apparent to even the British that control the zoo that the full and rule of Nigeria is a complete and shambolic failure. Are you aware of that? Let me tell you what they have done to all of you that you do not understand. They have squandered the resources of Nigeria so much that hyperinflation is coming. You think that one dollar to five hundred naira is bad? No, it's going to hit up to two thousand very soon. As I'm speaking, write it down. Do you know why? Because some of you are very poor students of economics. They have printed money. Full and have rendered the treasury useless. They are now printing money. Ask them where is the money of every budget that I have ever made. They have ever made since 2015. Where is the money? Only railway being built by MH with loans from China. So that means that even the proceeds from oil cannot even pay salaries. That is why they went and they minted. They went to the people printing money at C at a CBN. That is how foolish Fulani is. That's Fulani economics. To print 60 billion naira, as alleged or as stipulated or stated by Obaseki, Governor Obaseki of Edo State. They are minting money. Do you know what that means in real terms? Life is going to become more difficult. Because some of you, as I said earlier, do not understand how economics work. You have no idea how it works. Everything, every currency, every money you're minting or printing needs to have a value. Or else, infl hyperinflation will set in. And once hyperinflation sets in, all of you are gone. You are all gone as you are finished. You are absolutely finished. Poverty will become deepened. And you know the funniest thing is that the people that put <laughs> that idiot, the, the dead Buhari in power in 2015, they knew the idiot's record. They know he could not have performed. Everybody knows. He, in 1983, he was an economic disaster. Everybody knew this. Everybody knew. As young as I was then, I knew that this man was, uh, dear me, an impediment to economic growth. The dead Buhari, the late one, not the mask wearing young bubble that they say flew in from London today after being chased away from London, or should I say, castigated by Aisha, the idiot came back. Governor Baseki of Edo State has asked the Fulani federal government of Nigeria to tell the truth about the 60 billion they are printing. You don't think it's going to affect you? No one that they're planning putting up the price of petrol to, I don't know if it's 500 naira per liter. You don't know what the Fulani have in store for you. All of you are just dreaming. Talking about one Nigeria, Nigeria, Nigeria. By the time Fulani <laughs> must have been done with all of you, next in your next world, if you hear for you, even before the landing, you, you you take off. You are about to experience poverty and deprivation. 
And you know, they are very clever. They will keep you busy with 2023. As they came into our land, they have seen that we have managed to secure our land. ESN is doing the job right now in a police state. In Anambra, we are, we are fighting. I am alone. In Enugu, we are fighting. Around the Suka Corridor. We are fighting every blessed day. They know that ESN, that this IPOB that I lead by the great, special grace of Elohim will not allow them to enter our land. To conquer it. Never. That is why they are thinking, oh, if our army and police have failed so far, why don't we try their politicians? They are very stupid. They love money so much. Let us try them. That is what they have done. And they have failed woefully and completely. Because we are not going to allow them not one single inch of our land. It's not possible. We are not going to concede. Not one inch of our land will go to them. In the same place where Dave Umahi was shooting off his mouth, castigating people, defending him, defending a boy state, they've never asked us, how many men have you lost in a boy? How much have you spent in terms of arms and equipment? To make a boy not to fall to meet Yala for any terrorist. Nobody. But we have in Nigeria somebody who is a minister. His name is Pantami. He said it openly. I am not a fan of Boko Haram, but I support the Taliban and Al Qaeda. A minister of state. Britain, no condemnation. You see, all those petty journalists that uh, rely on brown envelope, they won't comment. Or write about this. Never, never. They will never do it. But somebody defending his land, somebody from that same land that he's defending is on television talking rubbish. What does that tell you about such people? What does that tell you about such people? A minister. My goodness me. Oh, dear me. I am not a fan of Boko Haram, but I support terrorist groups like Taliban and Al-Qaeda. Fulani. And you're in one Nigeria with him. And you think he will not take your land over. Is that what you think? I'm asking all of you. And it is getting worse. I want the governors of the East, those who are planning a battle and a book, I want them to listen very carefully to what I have to say this evening. Because their, their stupidity is getting out of hand. Their idiocy is getting out of hand. All these useless, idiotic governors, their foolishness is getting out of hand. And I want to remind them, including we, that there is a place in your so-called zoo that the white man named Nigeria, where things are happening, I have told you about their minister. Uh, is it uh, Panatami or Pantami? Who is in love with Al-Qaeda and Taliban? But hates Boko Haram. A minister of state in Nigeria. Britain can see it. EU can see it. UN can see it. Everybody can see it. They are all there talking. Wonder, 2023, have you planned? Have you, uh, let's build bridges for 2023. A terror sympathizer is a minister of state in Nigeria. And you're telling me that such a country deserves to survive. Please allow me to, to, to understand your line of reasoning. A terrorist. <laughs> Why have they not designated Flani bandits a terror group or Mietiala to be more precise? Why? Ask yourself this question. But they hurriedly prescribed IPOB with the help of these foolish governors. These same people now forming, a, forming a, or should I call it a vigilante group? No logo. Nobody has been employed so far. No arms. No vehicles. They are now saying we'll go back to the House of Assembly to see what they can. They only announced it to try and steal the thunder from ESN. That's all. A show is just a, a, a what can I put them a, a ruse, more like trying to deflect attention away from ESN. The wonderful work that ESN is doing. Who are the people confronting flanet terrorists in Delta State? ESN. Who are the people confronting flanet terrorists in Anambra, 
ESN. Who are the people confronting the Alateral group in Benue? ESN. Who are the people confronting Fulani Janjaweed inside the boy? ESN. Every blessed day. Not any of your stupid, hopeless, idiotic, cowardly governors, not any of them. All they can just come out and talk rubbish on TV against their own people. But they are being slaughtered. They cannot say anything. Judgment is coming. Let me remind me what is happening in the zoo up north with Mieti Yala that came out two weeks ago to claim ownership of banditry in Nigeria. They are not doing it in the open. They know they have, they have useless all of you that you can no longer rise up with one voice to speak because you love money. The first lady of Zamfara State, Hajia Aisha Bello Muhammad Matawale, has secured appointments of special assistance to Governor Bello Matawale for 20 members of Miet Yala Terror Group. In the same one, Nigeria. Your governors are busy talking rubbish against their own people. <laughs> I, I don't understand them. I do not understand them. I do not understand them. These are the things we are fighting against. These are the things we are fighting. Somebody is telling me on Instagram that Fulani, Fulani is in my village right now. <laughs> they will call our hotline and ESN will go. How many of you, how many, how many of you will ever ask us, uh, how many men have you lost in this very battle against terrorists? Some of you have no idea. And they are busy entertaining you with your governors and one idiot who is specializing in building hotels entertaining you all the time, talking and talking and against ESN because they know that ESN, anything that Fulani is against, go and love that very thing. That, will, that is what is going to save you. The same trick they're playing on some of you now. Look at how Saland. I have just mentioned the first lady of Zamfara State. It's a Haji Aisha Bello. Fulani. Zamfara does not belong to Fulani people originally. Zamfara is an ancient, they are ancient people, very old. They were the people that told an English cartographer many, many centuries ago that living across this very plain of Benue is the lost tribe of Israel. The map was put together in Shoreditch in London for information. It was the Zamfara people. They are old, very ancient people. But uh, their first lady is a uh, and that just came a few centuries ago, not even centuries, decades ago. Janjaweed from Senegambi. And they are securing their own people. They know that Miet Yala is the front. They are the, Miet Yala is the hitman of the caliphate. Using cattle as a disguise. Everybody knows that very well. Who doesn't know that Miet Yala? They are the hitmen. Remember, they, they told us that uh, people killing us and bandits in our first they are from Mali and Timbuktu. Have you all forgotten? So you have all forgotten. Anyway, no wonder you're in a zoo. Right now, instead of the so-called governors and the hotel builders to rise up and to say that let us support ESN, they are defending our land. They're saying no, as Hausa people foolishly did before the Fulani swallowed them. Fulani, they are very good at getting you to fight yourself so they can sneak in and take over your land. But I'm very grateful for my Yoruba brethren. They, they realize they, they know how they operate now, they know because they have lost a lot in to them before. So they know. That is why I know that the Europeans will do very, very well this time around. The first lady revealed in his statement in, 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 in her statement on Tuesday, speaking on behalf of the state chairman of Mieti Alatero Group, Al Haji Toko Abubakar lauded the first lady for her efforts in making meaningful change to full anise is in the news. Miet Yala stood up and said, thank you, First Lady, for making meaningful change on the lives of Fulanese. Not Nigerians. Ndizuzu, useless idiots in the East. I want you to understand what I'm saying very clearly. Fulani, they have come to take over your land. You may not like it, but it's, it's happening. 
they come. They leave their own problem. Oh. They are concerned about your security in the Southeast, security in the South South. They forget that they have ISIS, they have Al Qaeda in, in, in the Maghreb, they have Boko Haram, they have Fulani headsmen, they have bandits, only them. They will try to advise you on security in your own village. Well, I mean, uh, how they did this thing to you people, I don't know. But uh, thankfully, they didn't get us now because we are too smart for them. <laughs> All that rubbish is not going to work. That is why this evening I must make a special mention. I tweeted earlier, and I hope that my tweet wasn't misunderstood. It is now that it is dawning on everybody that IPOB has won the argument. And that is why this Omun uh, Mwaka doing court in the village because they, they, these are the same people who are crying, the same people that SARS will arrest them, cut off their penis, and send to China and make profit for Basanjo and for, and for the British High Commission in Nigeria. As I told you a few weeks ago, because in Nagunogu, sometimes you don't understand what I'm saying. I told you a few weeks ago that SARS was set up to be dealing with organs, human parts. That is their job. And the main financier is Britain. I told you that. You thought I was joking. Now it has blown now. A container load of um, penis from, from our side. People should go and check where the children are in China, from Nigeria, in China, from SARS. Obasanjo has a lot to answer from telling you that man is evil. Evil. He is he is doomed for two reasons. He will be a slave all his life, not just to uh, to Western intelligence agencies, I won't mention their names. He will be a slave to Fulani forever and ever. I thought Obasanjo was a man of honor, a man who could, at least you, bear, you stand on your own and speak the truth. He can never speak it. He was one that brought SARS in. But today, his people are, they are doing fantastically well. And I want to commend the owner of Ife. I want to mention him. I want to mention Are. Eba, Ghani Adams, and all the freedom fighters in Yoruba land. I want to commend them. I want to commend them for what they're doing. Because you think we have traitors in our land. <laughs> Yoruba land has the conquer, you know, treachery, the conquer one, the heavy one is there. But these people are moving on with their quest for freedom. And I welcome it. I welcome it. All those years we were fighting and demonstrating we are being shot to death and all the rest of it. We were paving the way for others to see what we have seen. Today they have seen it. That is why we can't allow idiots, even including your hopeless governors, to win what we are doing. This is the ruler, traditional paramount rule of Yoruba land, only of Ife. What did he say? Many Yoruba are now ready for self determination. Compare that with the Sarakin Fulani of, uh, of Imo State. Yeah, we don't want uh, Biafra. We want Nigeria. But the restructure, who is going to give you? Fulani will give you restructuring. Are you mad? Are you out of your mind? They can never do it. Fulani will never do it. Over the dead body, you understand. If Fulani makes the mistake of 2023 and power leaves them, they are finished. You don't, uh, uh, even if he goes to, to, to uh, an imbecile like Tinubu, they know that they've lost it forever and ever. Because in a matter of two months, all the things they have done will be unraveled in two months. Only two months. Probe and inquiries everywhere, they're finished. So they have to hold on to power. And the zoo is gone from there. Many Yorubas are now ready. The owner of Ife and the Bagani Adams. I commend them. I commend them deeply. I commend them. That was why I tweeted earlier today that we are all miscreants now. Everybody is a miscreant now. Because if, if you believe in self-determination, if you doggedly believe in your rights to be free in Nigeria, you are a miscreant, according to them. Zoo. And I'm glad to welcome into the fold of freedom fighters, the only of Ife. Uh, of course, uh, Eba Adams has been on the front line for a very, very long time. Very long time. I commend them. I commend them. And I say kudos to them, and more especially to IPOB, because you made it possible for people to have the courage to rise up to say, we too would like to be free. It is IPOB. 
That is why every, every agent of darkness is doing all they can to see if they can reduce this noble family to nothing, but they cannot succeed. Like carrying Biafran flag to go and rob a bank. So people will say, oh, is this how the, the Biafra, Biafran one, is this how it's going to be? You don't see idiots that talk rubbish all the time. You know, but instead they're killing us. The Tomahe will not speak in condemnation of what his friends are doing. But he will rise up in the morning to speak to a Janja with TV station channels to condemn people defending Ebu citizens, to condemn our actions. But he will not condemn the actions of the perpetrators. These are the leaders, one who these are your leaders, these are the people you have. Like weak. These are the people that you have. We are fighting battles on multiple fronts. Some of you do not understand. Because a white man understands what Biafra means. That is why if you go to a meeting in New York, you mention Biafra, they all run away. They know, they understand that that is the light of the world. The light of the black race all over the world rests on the shoulders of Biafra. Biafra emerges and the black man is free. Simple as that. Biafra doesn't come, a black man can never. That is why there is this grand conspiracy against Biafra. I went to that experiment today. You know my Facebook page, Mazen Nam, the Kano official. I tried to go there to broadcast today for the, I think for the past two months or that about. When I started the program, we were close to 4K four, four, four viewers, so to speak. Now we are at 246. Now ask yourself, what is the interest of Mark Zuckerberg in Biafra? Because he's one of them. People rise up in the morning and they, Lucifer, you know, Lucifer will go, it says Satan will enter into them. Fight against Biafra. Fight against Biafra. And that's it. Because the, the devil understands that in Biafra rests the light of God. I'm not telling you so you, we feel better about, how, about who we are. In Arochuku, where our ancients used to worship God, there is a village called in Hichu, where the light of God, where the light of God shines. That is the name of the town. There is no other place in the whole world that has such a name. No other place on this earth where the light of God shines upon his children. Hichu. That is why they will be against us, but they will fail. Because I know who I am. Some of you don't know who you are, but I do. I know who I am. That is why I also commend the youths of Ebony State. They call the amalgamated Mbiyajogu youth, ANY, for rising up to condemn the attacks happening in many communities over there. Where 12 farmers were killed, Umugudabo community. You know, Hupu, LGA. In every state. Channels TV will not carry it. Ah, never. Daily trust. It's not going to happen. Or a punch. Never. Because they want all of you to die off. And the foreigner will come in and take over our land. That's what they want. But as long as we are alive, it's not going to happen. Things are happening in a boom. But the governor is more interested in talking about things that are irrelevant. Absolutely irrelevant. When I want, you know, sometimes I, I say to people, when we say things here on radio, Biafra, some of you think it is so fantastic, it's so outlandish, it's unbelievable. In fact, it was made up. It cannot happen. <laughs> Eventually, it, it comes to pass. Like, uh, like the idiot wearing a mask. That mask will fall off. You, you anyway, let me not go too far into that because. Uh, you, some of you are products of the British Empire. You do not know how to reason independently. You always look for validation of whatever you're thinking to come from somebody else. That is the difficulty and that is the problem that some of you are having. And I do hope and pray that as we go forward, that some of you may be able to develop some semblance of common sense and be able to reason independently for yourselves. When I read about this, Chinese authorities seized over 7,200 human penises on a cargo ship from Nigeria. I was astonished. And let me tell you the funniest thing about we black people, why I always go back to say that they, 
the brain of a black person is deformed somehow is this. This type of news, anywhere else in the world, there will be wall-to-wall -wall coverage of this very news. Now ask yourself, for you, for a man to lose his private part, he has to die, isn't it? So in Nigeria, your SARS, so-called police, our police, our police, Nigeria police, this work is difficult, Nigeria police. Your police and your army working in the East, killed because no man, I don't know if many things happen these days anyway, but I know that nobody, at least, where we come from, has two penises. It's only one per person. 7,200 men have been killed by the Nigerian government, the police and the army. And I told you before that they will kill you for your spare, for your human parts. Some of you thought I was joking. Isn't it? But here it is. Here, another justification. There is nothing I did. I, I can't come on this noble platform to lie to you. I can't do that. 7,200 people killed by the Nigerian government, by the Nigerian state. Not only did they kill them, they were mutilated. Their penis is cut off and packaged for the Chinese market. As somebody asked earlier, I don't know what the Chinese people are doing with people's black people's penis. I don't know what they're doing with it. Can anybody tell me, please? What are they doing with it in China? Is it in the, in the noodles that are going to send back to us? What are they doing with 7,200? And I told you, it was under the reign of SARS, formed by our Basanjo, censored by the British, because Britain said we are the ones that gave them training. So you train them on how to kill people and cut off their private parts to sell. Because Britain wanted to take over the market of human parts, supplying liver, kidney, pancreas to, to patients all over the world. That was why Britain sponsored the formation of SARS, Special Anti-Robbery Squad. Go and do your research. Under Obasanjo. Because Obasanjo is a slave, as I said, of two world-renowned um, spy organizations. A slave, a person is a typical African slave, typical quintessential African slave. He cannot reason or defend his own people. They brought in SARS. SARS went into, into work. And now a cargo, a ship carrying human penises, men, your young boys, killed 7,200. And you wake up tomorrow and say, one Nigeria, hey, we're in one Nigeria. Let's say be in one Nigeria and unite and move forward. Whereas if you come back home late at night or if you miss road on the way, you are dead. They will kill you. They will cut off your penis. They will take your liver. They will take your kidney. They will sell it. Why won't these people support the culture of one Nigeria? If, if, if their people are sick, they can order kidney or liver from Nigeria. Why bother? Why should you break it? So if you break Nigeria now and everybody's on their own, where are we going to get our liver from? Pancreas, kidney, all these things from where? Lungs to replace smokers, chain smokers that developed um, lung cancer in America or in Europe. From you and I. They're waiting. It's like a, it's like a, a farm where they harvest. I told all of you during NSAS program, you cannot stop your protest. If you stop, you're finished. And some of you, as they're doing today in uh, in Anambra, you abandoned what you're fighting for, started looking for packets of Indomie in a warehouse, palliative. These black people looking for food. Now you have freezed Indomie. You have freezed the spaghetti. You have finished the, the, the tin fish. That thing holding you, has it left you? Black people, I'm asking this, OG black. After you abandoned SARS, protest, to go and look for Indomie, that thing holding you, has it abandoned you? The answer is no. You still have the same problem. That is why they can... This is the one they found, though. 7,000 is the one they discovered by mistake. Imagine how many that has gone there. Today, people refer to Abbas and as an elder statesman. Elder statesman. Whereas this man instituted something that is worse than evil itself. The harvesting of organs of his own citizens. Anyway, in Africa, because we are black, you know, we, we, always, we always love evil. People, some of you will like him because he's evil. 
<laughs> we are black now. We love you very much. This is a confirmation of what I have been saying all along. SARS is not special. They are there to kill young people. Once you're handsome, you're from the East and you're doing well. And I'm a child. They'll bring you out from, 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 from a bus conveying you and they'll kill you. Nobody's going to ask. Who's going to ask? It, because the Britain you're complaining to, Britain, they need the flesh liver. They need kidney from young people from our land. When it comes to organ trade and transfer, there is no racism. Because he's, he's a maintenance organ. Nobody knows which organ is a white man or a black man. Once the blood type can match, that's the end of the story. They now become, they're not, they're no longer racist. They love black once the, your, your liver is concerned. And now, once they have taken the inside, some unscrupulous individuals in China will say, at oh, least bring us the penis. Bring us the penis. We need it here. And you're in Africa. Shouting one Nigeria. You people are insane. People are mad, mad, mad. Lunatics everywhere. Lunatics everywhere. Some of you have... The, the reason why I preach the way I do is because if you cannot reason, you can never make any progress in life. Reason is what makes you human. Ask yourself... Is my child amongst the, is my child's penis amongst the 7,000 and something that is sent to China? This is from Nigeria. Those people that they kill, they have parents. They have brothers and they have sisters. Even if they don't, they have relatives. Your, the, the uh, nearly 7,500 penises of young men from Nigeria, so to speak, is in, is in, is in China. To service that market, where is their liver? Where is their their kidney? Where are all other vital organs in their bodies? Who got that one? And you never ask yourself, how did this begin? How did it come about? How? Any day you ask yourself that very simple question, how did we get to where we are today? You remember who brought in SARS? You will also remember it is Obasanjo. And you will know the reason why he met Sheikh Gumi, talking about um, uh, uh, keeping Nigeria one. Do you see the mess you're in? Now, let me put it to you this way. As long as SARS exists in Nigeria, as long as you continue to answer to one Nigeria, it doesn't matter who you are, one day your male child will go missing. And who knows, when you go to China, you'll be eating his penis, you will not know. You know, you may be in wonton soup. You'll be eating his penis. You will not know. That is the result of black man's stupidity and inability to reason. Now that you have seen that almost 8,000 people are missing, young people, instead of you to start asking questions, where are those people? How come body parts of, of this magnitude got to China? How of you heard? It's, it's our turn. 2023. Our chairman, transition chairman. Election. Politics until it happens to you, then your eyes will clear. Why am I saying this about reasoning? Our people, all of you have forgotten that this is not the first time that Southeast governors have floated on a security outfit. You have all forgotten. By this time last year, they floated one as well. Nothing came of it. That one, <laughs> I'll give you the name in a minute. Some of you, you know. I want some of you who are on online now, listening, those with Google, even those listening on radio, go and get your phone, smartphone or tablet or laptop. Connect it to the internet. Ask yourself, did Southeast governors float a security outfit February of 2020? And what is the name? Obuni will come out. Have you forgotten? Oh, you have forgotten. Southeast governors unveil plans for regional security outfit after a prolonged closed door meeting, February 9, 2020. The name was Obuni Now, after one year, it's a Bubako. Maybe it's a, 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 a giraffe or a, a, a rhino. 
Mbago. Oh, my goodness me. My goodness me. People should stop complaining on Facebook and go to Instagram or join any of the other platforms that I have, please, that we're reaching you with this evening. Go to Instagram. It's there. It's open. They can't stop that one. Obunigwe, it was called. A year ago, they formed Obunigwe. Only one year ago. Now we say we're back home. Every year. Why are they? Because what they, they, are in com they are not in competition with their mates in the, in the far north of the zoo. They are fighting IPOB and ESN because people listen to us when we speak. They know our people follow our directive. They understand that very well because our people are, we, we are the most intelligent race, if not in the whole world, at least in Africa. Our people cannot listen to you unless you have a valid point. They cannot follow you unless they know that you are clean. It's in their nature. That's how they are. It may take them years to begin to listen to you, but you have to prove that you are worthy to be listened to. Because our people listen to what we tell them, to the directives we give to them. That is the reason why every year they unveil a security outfit. Last year it was called a winning way. You have forgotten. But it's here. As someone said, the internet never lies. Of course it doesn't. Following a closed door meeting held by the Southeast governors at the governor at the government house in Enugu, Governor David Weze Umahi has disclosed their plan to forward a bill to Southeast Houses of Assembly to enact a law to back up the Southeast Union Security Outfit called the Winnipeg. The same thing they're saying this year. The same, the same, exactly the same thing. Exactly the same thing. Oh my goodness. We are also on YouTube, please. Those of you abroad, can you in fact download the app and listen to it. It's a low, should I say, low data usage app. It is because Facebook won't allow all of you to listen because they're terrified of us. <laughs> they're terrified of the truth. Did you hear what I said? I said last year they formed Obunibwe. And as they were forming the Obuni, where they said, they said, we are forwarding a bill to all the houses to enact a law. This is something they said four days ago. This is exactly the same thing they said four days ago. It's now, it's now a, 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 a Last year was a Obuni. Now it's a Ebube giraffe. Ebube, Ebube also. This year. Are these the people you will trust with your lives? I'm asking you. Are these the people, the sort of people you're going to trust? with everything that you are as a human being? I believe that the answer is no. I believe it is no. People called it hide and seek, that they are playing hide and seek. This was a year ago, national newspaper. Everybody reported it. Following the launching of Amoteku, they, they now launched their own called um, Obunigwe. What happened to Obunigwe? Nobody knows. As they keep announcing, no personnel, no body, they're not paying anybody, no logo, no livery, no nothing. No ordinary bicycle they don't have. They announced it to steal the thunder of ESN. So people can say, oh, but he have gone, he's backed up by the law. We have the governors. What happened to Obuniwe? Nothing. The same nonsense, the same garbage, year in, year out. I want, in fact, I, I'm, I'm going to put it after this program. Insecure, go and Google it. Insecurity. Southeast governors play hide and seek. Last year, they have come again this year because they are flying masters. Have said, "Why are you there? Uh, uh, we are dying in your forest." And I said, "So we'll kill you if we find in the forest you are dead." Do you know that Dave Vuma, he went on air and said that ESN fighting for terrorists and killing them in the bushes. That that is a crime. That's what he said. It's a crime. We cannot have them killing cattle and killing this this um full of, They are terrorists in the bushes. If we see you there, you are dead. We told you. We warned you. The same thing with uh, checkpoints on the road. I said I don't want to see any checkpoint anywhere. If you come out to do checkpoints, you will die. I don't want to see any checkpoint anywhere in our land. No checkpoint. Go to Sambisa Forest and establish your checkpoints there if you want. You will die there. 
You are doing security. Go and take that security to Yobe, to Zamfara, to, 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 to Bombay. Take the useless security to those places and mount your roadblocks there. Yeah, right. you, think, you think we are joking, or uh, if you do all these things somehow, or if DSS uh, uh, can organize a uh, uh, bank robbery, you think because of that somehow we'll stop what we're doing? Hey, is Biafra, uh, they had, you see how foolish they are? They had Biafra flag with them, and then so what? Don't the devil wear white sometimes? Nah, nah. lunatics everywhere. Lunatics everywhere. They think that we cannot preach this gospel of heaven. But nobody can stop us. If you go to Oprah News, it is there, published a year ago by Adelaja. Adeoye is there. Southeast security outfit of Winnipeg. They used that Arsenal logo. Arsenal. Last year. Southeastern Security Network. Last year. is a, is a, is a Winnipeg. With um, Arsenal logo. Arsenal. Arsenal. Arsenal Football Club in England. <laughs> now, let me read the news for you. The Southeastern Security Network, codenamed Obunigwe, has been accused of plagiarism of a popular London football club, Arsenal. I hope it's very clear to you, all of you. Obunigwe was launched. Where are they today? Where are they today? I ask all of you. On Friday, even I, I think they the in Canada they launched their own as well. It's called Shege Kafasa, which means I dare you in Kaduna. Everybody, everybody, we all have our own security in everybody, every hamlet, every state, every street. But you have police and you have army in the zoo because the army is more interested in joining terrorists to fight you. That is the thing that people do not understand, and that is what we are fighting. And who knows, maybe one day some of you will appreciate it. Some of you will understand it. You'll understand very clearly what we are doing. And in the fullness of time, you will appreciate IPOB for what it has done in your lives. <laughs> I, there was a news I saw, very, very touching, from my good friend, um, FFK, Fanny Kayode. Uh, Ganduje made a comment. This is for one Nigerian. Those who believe in one Nigeria, let's move our country forward in unity and in progress. <laughs> oh, dear me. Somebody is referring to us as minority tribes. You see, let me tell you, I want something to be done tonight, please. And I want Karamonde to do this. I know she does this a lot and does a lot of research for us. Go and bring out that there is a video. A white man, I think now he's dead and some documents how Britain rigged the census results in Nigeria. I want it, please, tonight I want it everywhere, to let Ganduja understand that Britain may have handed over Nigeria to Fulani people, but did not hand them over the truth. We have the truth. They have the lies. There is nowhere you go in the world where the population in the desert is more than those that occupy the rainforest or those who live closer to the source of water, which is the sea or river. Go and check anywhere in the world. The population of desert dwellers are always fewer than those that inhabit the rainforest. Everywhere in the world is only in the zoo called Nigeria that everything is upside down. That now people who are dwelling in the desert outnumber those who are in the rainforest. What a joke. What a joke. But this, I'm sure this lies with the keep telling it, maybe Daily Trust and all the Janja with newspapers and TV stations like channels. One day you all swallow it hook, line, and sinker and become even more gullible than you were the day before. This is what we are contending with. This is what we are fighting in the zoo. He made all these comments because full and see you as their property. You cannot do anything. Britain is backing them. Rome cannot speak. They can slaughter every Christian in the zoo. The Pope will not talk. They can do what uh, first. In fact, Anglican church is the most useless church in the whole world. Even I was uh, taken to Anglican church. Uh, don't get me wrong. It is the most useless out of all of them. The people that gave us Anglican church gave us the Bible today. They are, they are the ones telling us that Fulani was rule us. Fulani was rule us. Maybe people should stop going to Anglican church. 
is the most useless. Go and look, change the name or some, change it to Biafran Church. Change it to Biafran Church. Don't call it Anglican. Anglican Church means English Church. Are you English? You going to Anglican? I'm Anglican. Are you English? Anglican means English. Are you English? Are you English? I'm asking you. The most useless congregation in the whole world, Anglican Church. Useless to the core. Useless to the core. Oh my goodness. Then oh, Becky, he's begging uh, Ganduja to stop uh, making provocative comments. Did the Bible not say out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak it? Am I wrong? Or did I get that right? In fact, every Anglican, anywhere you see Anglican church signboard, will, will paint over the Anglican and write Biafra on it. It's better. Anglican. Are you, are you English? Anglican church. Are you English? I'm asking you. Even in Scotland, they don't have Anglican church. What have you? Presbyterian church or Methodist. In Scotland, do they, do they have Anglican church in Scotland? It's called Presbyterian church. Mad people everywhere. Anglican church. My fruit. Dara. The zoo belongs to Fulani. They are now saying it openly because they have the backing of Britain. Britain is the big daddy. Anything Britain says, it goes after all. Fulani can kill all of you. And Britain will can't speak to America. You know, that is our colony. You know, we have good relations. Leave us. That was why a man that I revere very much, Mbasili Kameji, came up to say that it's Fulani who introduced injustice and imbalance into Nigeria's governance. They are the ones that brought evil into the governance of the zoo. They will now run back and tell about Nzogu school. Nzogu school was a revolution against your incompetence and all your unbridled tribalism. I said it before, maybe some people did not hear me very well. Nzogu school was a revolution. I don't support it. I don't think that you should have gone on to to kill those morons from the north that he killed. He should have left them, allow their own people to, to, to tear them to pieces. A popular revolution. Not by way of a coup. I don't believe in coups. I don't believe in it. It was this Janjaweed who brought imbalance and injustice, unfairness into Nigeria's governance with the help of the United Kingdom. Because they see you as their slaves, you are still a colony. You are still niggers to them. After all, that was what they named you, Nigeria. Nigger area. People who are nigger, niggers occupying a nigger area. That's your name, Nigeria. Let me go of Nigeria, if you don't know. If you want to call it Nigeria, it sounds a bit sweet. It sounds a bit okay. Nigger area. That's who you are. You're a nigger. That's your name. Friends, they call it Niger. <laughs> Black people in this OG. <laughs> Lord, have mercy upon your souls. It was the ginger weed that brought in all this garbage into the zoo. And we are going to fight them every inch of the way. We are not going to concede. Not one inch. And Omahi, Miyetiala, if you are in any forest in Biafra land, you are gone. We will meet you there and you will die. Leave our forest alone. The same people that said no, the, no ban on open grazing. Have they been able to enforce it? It is actually ESM that is enforcing the, the ban on open grazing. That is why no cattle should be seen in a forest. We don't want people there. Because it is a plan by the Flannery Jangerweed to make our life an absolute misery. I want to turn to my own fellow Biafrans, those in Biosa State. You know, I'm sure by tomorrow now, DSS will is to give you some money, maybe, I don't know if it's, uh, I think now what they give is, I don't know if it's um, 400,000 Naira for you to get a, a group of people, share you 400,000 Naira to present your, your face as maybe one group or solidarity advocacy group of buyers. I want to ask Edwin Clark this very evening. He's an old man, so he knows. He was a traitor, a frontline traitor during the war. All of you that betrayed Biafra, where are you today? Edwin Clark, I'm asking you, where are you today? And I don't want to talk about Omnogen, the man that they removed, and none of you did anything about it. But you're from the so-called South-South, your Niger Delta, or 
south, 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 or south, 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 south. I don't know where the south, south will stop. Because in geography, there's nothing, in no cardinal point is south, south. I want to ask you this evening. There is a man called Moses Jitobo from Bayelsa State. He was meant to be the next IG of police. He's my, the one who's supposed to be there now. <laughs> Two months ago, when Adamu's tenure was over, they, pro, they played a game and prolonged his tenure to another three months. We, he came to talk rubbish in the world and they sacked him. This man called, he's a young man because I'm older than him. He's only 52 years old. He should have been the IG of police. His name is Moses Jitobo from Bayelsa State. They retired him at the age of 52 instead of making him the IG of police. And now what they did, they, they went for a 57-year-old northern Fulani Muslim to make him the acting IG of police. And I have not heard anybody crying from Bayelsa of marginalization. I have not heard any of them come to lament or protest about domination. The oil in our land, the oil that you have in the land of Bayelsa, 80% of it belongs to the north. The other 19 and a half percent belongs to Yoruba. Only half percent belongs to one or two people from the east. Nobody's dominating you. Do you see how clever the Fulanis are, how they play this very game? Fulani, they, they don't have any issues. All they need to do is to get you hating yourselves. That is all they need to do. Very clever, oh, very brilliant tactics, I'm telling you. Very, very brilliant. All they need to do is to get you to hate yourselves. That is all they need to do. And then they relax and they enjoy the fallout. It was the stupidity of the likes of Edwin Clark that made it possible for them to dismiss Onogen. He wasn't the chief justice for long. That made it, that made it possible for this man, this young man, Moses Jitobo, to be disgraced out of Abuja at the age of 52. You know, I keep telling them, treachery never pays. DSS will come to us, oh, don't worry, you're, you're not evil, you're alone. I accept your dependence. Because they know that alone you cannot fight them. Do you think they're stupid? It's a simple case of the bad and rule. They know if you're... Look at Ogoni, I keep asking every day. Have they cleaned the land of Ogoni? Have they gotten their independence? Have they... Uh, has life improved in Ogoni land? The answer is no. But the Fulani will encourage you to assert your Ogoni identity over Biafra. You're not Biafra. Biafra is what binds all of us together. And with the name Biafra, we can fight and be free. All of us. But they tell you, don't support Biafra. You're Ogoni. You, you are a job. But uh, our brother has been sacked. <laughs> what did you do? Because you are too small to confront the might of fallen Janja Buddhism. You are too small. You cannot. Only in Biafra can we confront them. Do you understand what I'm saying? That was why I remember the DSS director, again, also from Bayelsa that they removed. They sacked him. They sacked him again. They sacked him. And that oil you're fighting for, uh, um, uh, what's it called again? Um, resource control. You can never get it. You can never, ever get it. From now till the kingdom come, you can't. Do you know why? Because they cleverly carved you out of Biafra. Once you're out of Biafra, everything you're asking for, everything you're agitating for, you can never get. But as one, we are unstoppable. Absolutely unstoppable. Ask yourself this question. Why is it that the gender we are concerned with you, some of you, in the East, politicians taking over and floating your own security outfit by state, by state. When they have a greater problem in the North, some of you, I have preached this thing before, but some of you don't listen. 
Britain knows what I'm saying. Or Basanjo, who is their slave, understands what I'm saying. Every intelligence agency in the world understands what I'm saying. Who created ISIS in West Africa province? They only, I think it was yesterday that they released the video of Saturday's attack on Damasak in Bruno. Do you know why they keep attacking Bruno all the time? Some of you don't know this, do you? You have no idea. It is how the Fulanese behave. They are attacking Bruno because Bruno never failed to Fulani caliphate. And there was a strategy that we learned, I learned from the Shehu of Bruno that fought the Fulani when they were coming. Anywhere they gather, the Shehu of Bruno will attack them. The Shehu never allowed the Fulani to attack his kingdom. Never, never. The paramount ruler of Bruno, his title is the Shehu of Bruno, not M.A. of Bruno. Shehu of Bruno. It's only now that the Fulani are forcibly creating their emirates all over the place. In that part of the world. For Bruno never fell. The Canem Bruno Empire never fell. They are not Fulani. Medugri is not Fulani. Bruno is not Fulani. They are Canem Bruno people. Very old as well, if I might add. They fought against the Fulani by attacking every Fulani formation. Every Fulani army sent to attack them, to conquer them, they defeated. And you know, who, who, oh God, people don't know history. The people leading the charge were actually Fulani, but the full soldiers were Hausa people. The same way it is today. That is why every Fulani terror group is focusing on Borano. They want Borano to fall to them. That is something that people don't know. You know when I say, oh, we northerners, we, you know, that is the trick they play on some of you. For we say, we northerners. And that northerners, northerners that I'm mentioning includes Igbo people in Benue State. <laughs> that is the, the, the joke of the century. We northerners. But I am Bruno attacking Bruno. ISIS in West Africa released a video of Saturday's, Saturday's attack on Damasak in Bruno State. I have not had people say, oh, there's this everything, Bruno, do something. Let's do this, let's do this. Innocent people will be released from a prison in nowhere. Everywhere. Hey, even governor's forum. Everybody. Our life is in danger. Security everywhere. But in Bron, Bron is being ravaged on all sides, from all sides by Fulani Janjawi. From every angle, Bron, Bron is in trouble. Are you not aware of that? But they're focusing on nowhere. They released their video. The reason why I'm mentioning this is this. I want to let you understand something you don't know. It was Buhari when he was alive that created ISIS in West Africa. Buhari created ISIS. In, you know, they thought they were being very clever. You know, you know, DSS in Nigeria, they're so foolish. All they know in life, they think if we divide them, if we if we get somebody or open the link of of rip up or somebody like that or, or from uh, uh, a to, to rival ESN, somehow they will succeed. That is how they are. That is their mindset. It's full and a janja way. That is the way they reason. Replicate everything IPOB is doing. That is why even I think Facebook has shut down. <laughs> they've shut down. <laughs> they've shut down. We are broadcasting. <laughs> Oh, God. Isn't it very funny that Facebook has shut down my live broadcast this evening? But the same Facebook will allow multiple fake accounts run by DSS to be opened up in my name. Multiple fake Mazen Nam, the kind of accounts everywhere. They won't do anything. That one that they know that people identify me with, they want to shut it down. Let us try them. <laughs> I want to try them once again. You know, they're very foolish. And well, funny enough, these are Yoruba young people in Lagos doing all of You know, black people, uh, if you want to conquer us, you use us to conquer ourselves. That's the way it is. They think they're doing their job, earning their pay, but they're enslaving themselves. The more they do this, the more the Fulani take over their forest, isn't it? The more Fulani people are in their forest taking it over. They don't understand that what goes around comes around. We are live and we are direct. I think they, they may have shut it down. From, I don't know. There, there are four people now watching. From 4,000 to four. We've not gone up to for 20, maybe 24 people watching. Then we must preach the gospel of heaven. We must preach this very gospel here. As I was saying before, I was rudely interrupted by the unethical conduct of Facebook.
by removing my broadcast this evening. I, ISIS in West Africa was created by the late, dead Muhammad Buhari before our eyes in 2016. Buhari called Boko Haram his brothers. Buhari then, when he was alive, not this idiot you're seeing now, the original Buhari is dead and buried in a shallow grave in Saudi Arabia. When he was alive, he called Boko Haram his brothers. He turned around and said that uh, any attack against Boko Haram is an attack against the North. Understand this very clearly, please. When he became the president of the zoo, having used Boko Haram to discredit Jonathan's administration, he called them for a roundtable meeting. They took his money. That's number one. And they told him they would stop. But they continued to attack Muslims in the North that they felt were apostates, people who didn't quite believe in their own vision or brand of Islam. Do you know what happened? Buhari now went out to go and get the son of Yusuf Muhammad, the founder of Boko Haram. His name is Al Banawi. I've preached this many times, but because zoo people are hard at it, you know, they're deaf and dumb sometimes. It's very, very idiotic. Allow me to repeat. Buhari went and recruited Al Banawi, the son. He would, he, then he was a commander in Boko Haram under Shekau. They caught him and brought him to a court in Abuja. Unfortunately for them, I was in court the same day, in the same court of uh, Tozo, when they brought him to court. He was laughing and smiling, no handcuffs, no chains. But we, fighting for freedom, we came to court with handcuffs and in chains. After a while, I think it was in Bintan Yako's court, they released him. Buhari gave the order that he should be released. He shouldn't, be, he shouldn't be arrested. He, Albana was released and given the task of only attacking the army and police and Christian worship centers. Buhari was upset that Boko Haram abandoned the plan that they reached. And we are now attacking Muslims as well, bombing mosques. He was very, very upset. He now got the son of Muhammad Yusuf that Nigeria police killed to head ISIS in West Africa. Because the late dead Buhari was a very big fan of ISIS. He was a fundamentalist. He was one of those, you know, Wahhabi, um, um, should I say, um, um, people with a very distorted view of Islam. His set was Wahhabi. He was a very strong believer in the Wahhabi tendencies. He wanted to conquer the whole of Nigeria for Islam. But some of you were too foolish to understand. That is why they have concentration of power in the North. That is why they want to run the zoo called Nigeria as a police That is why they can do anything and get away with it. Anything, full on, they can do anything, including coming to your village. They can go to your village tonight and massacre all of you and nothing will happen. Buhari called this little boy called Abanawi and asked him to head ISIS to do for him what Shekau refused to do. Today, or should I say on Saturday, they attacked and sacked a village in Damasa in Borono. He was in custody. Not reserved. No, he was released. Go to the court records in Abuja, you will see it there. That is why Nigeria is a country of hypocrites unrepentant hypocrites and that is why the zoo must fall the zoo must fall you are in a country where people are telling you that Chad a separate sovereign nation should benefit from Nigeria they brought in their name national identification whatever rubbish Four million Chadians have name right now as we speak. They want to unite the Fulani people together. Whereas in the East, only in the East, division everywhere through the governors that they imposed upon all of you. None of these governors can go back, go to the quiet of their bedroom and ask themselves, 
this thing I'm doing, is it right? How come I am here persecuting my own people? And sometimes I want we get to be able to reason, how come I'm here persecuting my own people, whereas in the North, they are uniting the Fulani people, even those who are killing, pillaging, raping, and murdering others. They never reason, they never think. That is why they are in the mess they are in today. And that is why there can never, ever be any forgiveness. The full and when they came into power, they told you, we are here to fight corruption. We must fight corruption, as they call it. Some of you were taken in by it. Some of you, we are so foolish, you even believe them. But I know who they are. I know that Buhari is one of the most corrupt people in the world. The wife is corrupt. Aisha Buhari is wanted in the USA for corruption. She was implicated in the Harley Button bribery scandal. Aisha Buhari cannot travel to the USA. But you call the late dead husband the saint. But the wife is a criminal. The husband is like, I mean, come on, you push him to wake up and smell the fura de nunu, not coffee this time around. I just want to point out how foolish your average Nigerian is, how idiotic they are. I am asking you a question. Why is it that Aisha cannot travel? Because the Fulani are corrupt. Even Lugard captured it in his report that the Fulani is they are very lazy and corrupt. He said it. They just want to have a good time, like go to Dubai. They always prefer to go to places that have been finished by other people. They go to Dubai, they have fun. They go to England, they buy houses. That's what they, they go to US. They, uh, they make, but now, of course, uh, Trump banned all of them. They can no longer go there. Only if, um, if um, the new US president will allow them to go in. Why am I saying what I'm saying? Because the Fulanis have stolen money again. They steal money every day. They have their ruling classes, the abakiaris of this world, their families, making your life a misery. And you are from the South. Every blessed day. What Nigeria? Our country, Nigeria. <laughs> Fulani is busy making you dry and you are foolishly shouting one Nigeria because you're a fool, a complete idiot. What did they do? <laughs> We have been writing to the Accountant General and Ministry of Defense asking them to refund the money that they took from us. How much did they take? 7.5 billion secret withdrawals. Even the Senate of the Zoo summoned the Finance Minister and the AGF and ask yourself this question. Why is it that nothing will happen because there is an inbuilt Fulani majority in, the, in both houses. Common sense. I want the stupid governors in the East to understand the way that the Fulani is. Oh, they were even paid, they kidnapped somebody. Um, Nonso Anyakora. Fulani people received in our land 10 million to release him. And the governor in Anambra, but the governor is fighting IPOB and the ESN. Do you, do you see? Anyway, I give kudos to well done, Ofulani. You, you did a very good job in dividing our people and making us appear very foolish. Uh, let me go back to this. Very, let me leave the idiocy of Obia not to follow him. Let me go back to this thing that the Fulani is the most corrupt people in Nigeria. Some of you, I don't know how you allow yourselves to be deceived. I think Tinubu used Yoruba media might to deceive all of you in the hope that in 2023 he'll become the president of the zoo. Now let me read this from you. This is news in the zoo, by the way. Zoo called Nigeria. Senate Committee on Public Accounts has summoned the Minister of Finance, Ahmed Zainab. That's the, the side chief of, um, of um, Abakiari before he died. Ahmed Zainab. And the Accountant General of the Federation, Ahmed Idris, Finance Minister, Accountant General, both Fulani. <laughs> over the secret withdrawal of 7.5 billion from the 2% National Automotive Design and Development Council levy account domiciled with the central bank. In other words, in Nigeria, the only place in the world where an idiot can walk into the central bank because they one coward they put there in and say, give me 7 point. She, oh, yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am. Here you are. Withdrew 
7.5 billion naira in cash. Full on him. That's how they steal. You know, the, the, in the East, they go for security vote of 200 million a, 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 a year. <laughs> Full on him going to the central bank and collect cash. 7.5 billion cash, raw cash. According to the Senate, the report in in indicated that the first 3.8 billion was withdrawn in two installments. In other words, all the facts and figures are there. 2.8 billion in 2005 and, uh, and, um, and, uh, and, um, and 1 billion in 2016. Are you following? Contained in a report. They are asking them. Where is the money? These are the people that was holding all this for 400 for 250 million naira. Not even the price of uh, that, uh, not, not even up to the amount that Aisha spent uh, for these few months that she ran away to, to, to Dubai with her boyfriend, with her lover. Fulani stole 7.5 billion. Two people. Fulani finance minister, Fulani accountant general, and you're in one Nigeria where there is a federal character. <laughs> Lord have mercy upon you people. Lord have mercy. This is why we want to go. I want Britain to understand that this is the reason why Biafra must stand. And this is the reason why we must not. Not only are they stealing our money, they control almost uh, with their uh, Tinubu counterpart. 95.5% of the oil in our land. They go to Central Bank and they steal money from us. They are building their way for their relatives in Nigeria Republic. And you're telling me to be in, in, in such a country? I think you must be demented. And on that note, or should I say, before we close, actually, court boys in Obosi, and Obunike, those that went to Mbuko, but you can't arrest them. From tonight, you disband. You are disbanded tonight. No copy me again. If I see anybody belonging to any cult from tomorrow, <laughs> we'll go and start the story from the beginning, please. Tell them what you did. Because you'll be dealt with we have come to the end of our program this evening. I will be back on live on air tomorrow morning, taking your questions. I will be live 7 a.m. Biafra land time tomorrow, taking your questions live and answering them. The most difficult questions. Don't call me to greet me. I don't need your greeting. Ask me the most difficult question. I'll answer them regarding what we are doing to restore Biafra in our time. I thank you once again very much for listening. If you're in a court, throw away whatever badge or charm or any of this rubbish you have. Go and look for where Fulani people are and meet them, confront them. Not doing your show in the village like, a, like an Igbo governor that cannot confront the counterparts in the north, but is in the village making life a misery for us. Go and fight the Fulani and stop making a mockery of your idiotic existence. From me, from here, good evening.